Now I want to talk about the Italians, uh, and I'm getting close to the end. So Professor Francesco Piantelli, at the, uh, uh, a biophysicist actually at the University of Siena in 1993, produced uh, excess heat from hydrogen gas, normal hydrogen. Normal hydrogen contains one part in 6,000 deuterium. So normal hydrogen is not the same as light hydrogen. There still is some deuterium there, and that might be significant. Um, his experiment looked like uh, this. Basically, it's a vacuum system, carefully controlled, very carefully controlled uh, vacuum environment. You need to pump it down a, a long way in order to remove the uh, oxides and other uh, chemical impurities from the surface of your nickel uh, rod, put it in uh, and load it up with hydrogen, the platinum resistance uh, temperature sensor here. So he measures the temperature of his rod. He has a heater, and um, he can back his heater off as the, um, as the, it's not even an electrode. It's not electrified. This is just a, a bar or rod of uh, nickel in a hydrogen environment at temperatures, oh, three, four, greater than 400 degrees uh, centigrade. Here's a patent, three more in process, puts in 140 watts, he gets excess of 20 to 50 watts of heat. That's what, 15 to 35 percent or something like that. Not, uh, not heroic, but, but certainly interesting, and you couldn't power your home if all you got was 30 percent more heat than your electrical uh, input, um, but his experiment is stable, lasts for very long periods of time. Here's 278 days. I think a gestation time for humans is 266 days, so it's 900 megajoules, average of 37.5 watts out. And these are the two best cases. Another one, 319 days. So this thing runs for a very long time, which is not the same as our uh, aqueous. Fleischmann-Pons experiment. Our Fleischmann-Pons experiments run for weeks, but eventually they peter out. They sure as heck don't run for months. On one occasion, Piantelli was able to reduce the input power all the way down. He took the power off the heater entirely, and there was two watts of uh, power going into the system just to, uh, just to control his uh, sensors and whatever. So he was able to self-sustain. Basically, the cathode stayed hot for a significant period of time with no electrical uh, stimulus. Makes it very hard to find fault with the calorimetry if the input power is zero. When you said significant period of time, how long? Days, hours, weeks? Uh, weeks. Weeks. I went to visit Piantelli recently in June. There's a nice laboratory in Tuscany. It's worth visiting. Um, <laughs> He's also seen neutrons, he's seen gammas, and he's seen uh, charged particles. When he takes his cathode, he takes his, I don't even know what to call them, takes his pieces of nickel out of his experiment at the end, puts them in a cloud chamber. He has a nice uh, cloud chamber with a, with a magnet. It cloud, the thing clouds up, and there's so many fast particles coming out of these things that you can't even r resolve them. You have to wait a couple of hours before they die back, and you can start to see the tracks. So there's clear uh, nuclear evidence and tantalizing uh, energy at um, sort of useful temperatures and sort of useful amounts. So along comes Andrea Rossi. Rossi never worked with Piantelli, but basically seems to be working on exactly the same thing. Instead of using um, nickel rods, he's using fine nickel uh, powders, which makes sense if this effect is a surface effect, as most of us think that it is, well, increasing the surface should increase the effect. So, so Rossi has developed this thing that he calls an ECAT, an energy uh, catalyzer. If you uh, Google it, you'll get thousands of hits. I get 10 emails a day on this uh, subject. It's a remarkably uh, crude device, but we don't know what's in it. Um, Basically, all you do is you pass water through the tube. An annular space is filled with uh, nickel uh, powder of some type. He tells us the source. I don't know much more about it than that. And uh, wraps it all up. This is intended to operate at um, 1 to 4 kilowatts or so. This is a 1 megawatt module in a shipping container ready to be shipped to the United States. 
Here's the scheme. Absolutely. Uh, that would be a, t a d difficult measurement uh, j just because nuclear energy is so energy intense. You know, a change of mass of a gram could make a, a, a crater the size of California, I think. <laughs> or, or something like that. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't propose to try that. So, so Rossi, and the thing to know about Rossi and everything I say uh, from now on is I haven't verified any of this. Uh, Rossi is a dodgy character. He's had trouble with the law. Uh, pe <laughs> pe people believe that this could be a scam. Uh, I, I'll, I'll preface my remarks with, with, with that. Um, however, having said that, uh, people that I know and trust have stood in front of Rossi's reactor and come away convinced that it really is doing more or less what uh, Rossi claims. This includes my ex-program uh, manager at uh, DARPA, very, very intelligent man, um, good friends of mine. This test here, Ampenico run, uh, run 2, conducted on September 25th, 2009 in New, New Hampshire, was witnessed by a good friend of mine, also a very smart guy. 64 liters of water circulating through a loop to be heated. Temperature in, 23 degrees centigrade. Temperature out, 46. So he doubled the temperature. Time of operation, four hours. Average power in, four watts. Average power out, 400 watts. Gain, 10. If you could do that, really do that, and uh, sustain it and turn it on and off at will, you could sell a water heater where your uh, water uh, was heated and home was heated for one-tenth of the electrical cost. So this is starting to sound like uh, technology. In Bologna, January 14, 45 minutes generating steam. So he's certainly not limited to, uh, boiling, uh, to, 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 the, to the boiling point. Uh, average power in one kilowatt, average power out 12 kilowatts, gain 12.7. This test was criticized fairly and unfairly, as is usually the case. Um, generating steam, you have to know, there's a lot of energy uh, uh, transitioning from boiling water to steam. That uh, uh, amount of energy is very significant compared to the amount of energy taken to, to, to raise the temperature of water. The big question is how much of the uh, liquid phase had been turned to steam and how much uh, water was coming out in the, in the form of droplets and, 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 and whatever. So how, how dry was the steam is the question. But um, I, the calculations I do, if, if, assuming that I'm being given the numbers and the numbers are being given to me honestly, uh, it doesn't matter how much, uh, you know, how dry your steam was. So it was still excess energy and we're quibbling sort of whether it's a gain of 12 or a gain of 4 or 5. Both are kind of interesting. In response to that criticism, another test was run in Bologna. I um, can't even see it on that side. 18 hours, single phase, no boiling. Uh, power in 1.2 kilowatts for 10 minutes. Then he backed it off to 100 watts. Power out 15 kilowatts. Gain of 150. Hydrogen consumption, 4 grams. That's ordinary hydrogen. So I don't know how clear this is. This is hot off the press. It's not my calculation. But um, an integrated system test of one module of that one megawatt unit was tested last Thursday, October 6th. And I'm uh, still accumulating the data. But basically, the red at the bottom is the electrical power in ramped it up, held it steady, turned it off, turned it off. You turned it down, turned it down, turned it off, left it on for a while, and then turned it off for the rest of the test. So for, it's about a nine-hour test. About four hours of that time, there was no electrical input power at all. The blue line is the thermal output, basically a crude uh, mass flow calorimeter. So if we look at energies, the yellow, which is so hard to see, 
is the integrated input energy at flat lines because the power goes, gets uh, turned off. And the system continued to produce uh, heat until uh, about 33, whatever the hell units that might be, <laughs> um, kilowatt hours or you know something, and, uh, and integral energies. So the input was 10, the output was 30. So gain, gain of 3.3, which is not so impressive, but it's still a very, very tantalizing uh, uh, proposition. So I offer you that as not having been scrubbed at SRI. We would love to test a module here. We have made several suggestions along those lines. So far, uh, we haven't got one in our hands, but 